Welcome back. It is Friday and that means FNA Friday for new animators, tips and tricks. And today's going to be the last part of how an environment can make your animation better. So today is the last part, part three of the series. And I'm going to talk about Django Unchained and a couple of few other examples. So let's get straight into that clip. And just as a warning, it's going to be pretty bloody for a little moment. Let's check it out. Alrighty. So we have this scene. Let's just play it and shoots him and then wipes his face and shoots the cake. So why do I like this? And going back to how outside forces affect the character. So he shoots him here, even though the blood spatter comes out here. Look at this. The blood goes straight in his face. You can see his reaction here. He goes over there. He knows he is next. And what does he do? And he, as in the main character, he can't shoot. He can't go over there. He has to wipe his face because his face is full of blood. And only then can he shoot. This seems like a very small detail, which it is. And in movies with actors, they do it instinctively because it's real. Something's in your face and you go, oh man, I can't do this. Oh, now I can see. Now, that doesn't mean that in your animation, you got to shoot people all the time and blood sprays into characters' faces. But let's look at environmental influences, for instance. So one of the examples that I bring up in class is how can you escalate a shot? How can you go from a simple exercise to something a bit more complex? And one of the examples is a character getting out of a house. So a classic thing would be a couple steps or just the walk cycle and then on the straight line. But I always encourage students not to do one axis type of thing. So someone nods, it's not just one up and down. It has different type of axes with tilt and side to side. There are many things that's gonna be a, a different FNA about one axis type of thing. But in my example, it would be instead of having a character just walk straight, what if the character is still walking? That's the main thing you wanna show body mechanics, but the character gets out of the house. So you have opening the door, so different mechanics of if it's a light door, a heavy door, and as I talked about, is this uh, an environment that the character knows or doesn't know? Is it a familiar opening? Maybe the character is holding something and pushes the door open with the foot or the back, or it's something where it's a brand new house and it's clean and the character opens the door differently. Anyways, instead of it just a straight walk, you have a character opening, and maybe turning and then closing the door. And again, depending on how many times has the character done this, is it a turnaround and then closing and turning back? Or is it going to be opening, not looking, and then maybe going sideways and the foot kind of kicks the door in? That, of course, all depends on your character and what you want to do with it. But in terms of the mechanics, instead of just the walk cycle going straight, you've added walk and then a 180 potentially or 90 or just some sort of side movement, side steps continues forward and keeps walking. Now you can escalate that again in terms of, well, maybe the character gets out of the house and then a couple steps go down and then there's the road. So you have a get out, turn around, closing the door in a specific fashion, walking downstairs, which is very tricky. And then if that's the sidewalk, either turn left or right or whatever it is towards the car or just the walk. Now, just to escalate this further, you can take this and let's pretend that the character is really tired or in a hurry, he has to go and get a job or something, or maybe you have to run to get the bus or whatever it is. So you have all of this with a specific overriding character emotion or an action or just a want that a character has. So it goes beyond body mechanics. And this can go further and further and further. And it kind of goes back towards the previous clip that I did with how can you take your animation to the next level? Meaning how can you add complications and more complexities to your character? But one of the things you can add is weather. So the character gets out and again, could be in a hurry, could be tired, could be drunk. I wanna get out of the house drunk early in the morning, but why not, could be something. But now I imagine potentially it's really cold outside. So you get out of the house and the house is warm and it's heated. And that first step going outside kind of hits the character almost like a wave of coldness going, ooh. And then you do the same thing, walking downstairs, going to the side, rushing to the bus or whatever it is. But then, you know, I'm not gonna say the cliche thing, of, ooh, it's cold but the whole thing has the overriding layer of this is going to be really, really cold. Or you come out from air conditioning house or apartment, you open the door and it's, oh, this is really hot. And then you got the same thing, but with heat. Or it could be rain. So you can bring it back to take shelter, which I talked about yesterday, or in this clip, like Jang on Chain, where something gets into the character's eyes. Character walks out and it's raining, stops, looks up, and then you have him react like this. Or she could do something where maybe she has a hat, puts a hat down, whatever you want to do, and then you continue with the action. But the overriding layer is that it's raining. So it could be drizzling a little bit, or a little bit of a jog. It could be raining really heavily. So maybe the character has newspaper and then puts it over the head and then runs out because it's that rainy. If it's really rainy, maybe the newspaper goes up and after two steps, it's so wet that the newspaper dissolves, gets on his face, or I don't know. Again, you can continue to add complexities 
But to me, it's not just adding something to make it more tricky or complex or difficult to animate. To me, it's something where it's one more obstacle or if it's just one, it doesn't really matter, but it's one thing that will change the character's acting choices. So if it's really hot, maybe that will make him run, walk slower. If it's really cold, run faster. Maybe you can add complexities where it's really cold, it gets on the step and slips a bit. So instead of just going the default way of I'm taking a couple steps out, walking downstairs, going left, right, whatever it is, you can add so many things in terms of this character emotions, the action that they need. They gotta go somewhere because they're late. But on top of that, Again, it could be something interesting with the weather. So it could be raining, could be hot, could be cold, could be hailing, could be really hurting, or it could have really, really strong winds. Like in this clip where this character really tries to walk forward. I mean, this could be exaggerated, but I mean, why not? This could be your stylized version of it's really, really windy. So imagine again, the character gets out of the door, opens the door, gets out of the apartment, and it's so windy that the whole character is just leaning over. Maybe there's a hat, hat flies away, goes, oh no, and then it has to close the door. And then the whole walk downstairs and over is the whole character is tilted throughout the whole time because he or she has to lean against the wind. And that could be just one more layer that makes it interesting, stand out, just different, and just add something where you can now have the character do something specifically because of that environment, but something that's very specific to that character. Maybe the character doesn't care that it's rainy, or maybe the character just put on Something could be maybe some makeup or the character does have a brand new suit and the environmental effect then destroys everything. And then now you go, well, how is that character going to react? And then you can go against type. Maybe they don't care or they love it or they get really angry or whatever it is. But it's just more than just a default walk, a default situation or a character going from A to B. And it doesn't have to be massively complex. I mean, not that I'm that exaggerating, but I'm definitely going, okay, how can we make this much more complicated and complex? And again, to the next level, but it could be simpler. It could just be like Julian's clip that I show where a character opens the door, goes through and the door comes back and kind of wakes up the character out of their whatever state they're in. It could be small, but it adds a certain specific touch. Or you can do something smaller where it creates a specific dynamic between two characters. So let's go old school sci-fi where maybe half the population are robots or just creatures from, let's take body snatchers, right? Where humans don't quite know which ones are real or not, or it's just kind of the beginning where some of the humans are kind of different. So imagine, I don't really have a cup here, this awesomeness here, there's a light here, a little thing from Disneyland. Let's pretend this is a, um, I don't know, a coffee mug or a tea mug. So for instance, you're in the kitchen and the characters have this, and one guy picks it up and goes, ah, this is really hot. Imagine this is the handle and kind of holds it like and goes, hey, here's your tea or here's your coffee. But you establish that it's really, really hot and you hold it in a specific way or maybe maybe there's something where it pulls out the sleeve with his teeth and then kind of, I don't know, whatever it is, right? But already that could be interesting in terms of body mechanics and acting choices. And then the character goes here, here's your coffee and gives it to the other character. And the character goes, yeah, okay. And then just grabs it and then walks away or does something and puts it and I don't know, it still holds it and does something else. And then your first character looks at the other, goes mm, and thinks, and then that's your cue for your acting and your pantomime going, why is this not hurting? Is this character just too tired, totally weird? Or is this could be the alien because they don't really show pain and emotions on and so on. So again, not just to have a prop where it's always the classic kind of the cigarette type of thing, but if you have a prop, what could you do? What could you do to add this interest to the shot and this complexity to a character where it's not just there because you want to add something more difficult, but it helps to push the character or the relationship between characters, or just something a bit more character driven because of the choices they make and how they react to something. As you can tell, I just like to add things, but again, it has to further the character. It has to add character. Maybe it could add conflict or just some tension, but I'm just not a massive, massive fan of characters in an empty room delivering a line, again, which can work, and there are really, really great examples out there. But again, if you've done this before and you're going, well, what could I do next? What could be different? What could I do to make it more interesting? Or just simple, what could I do to stand out so that it doesn't look like any other shot that I see online on, on people's reels? And there's a lot more, and I'm sure I'm gonna show you future examples in weeks ahead and years ahead. But for now, I'm gonna close this chapter. This is part three, and that's it. I hope I made my point clear with three example uh, FNAs. Uh, if you have any questions about this, obviously leave me a comment. But well, let's call this series done. If you like this, give this a like, subscribe if you want to. You know the drill. 
hit the bell if you wanna get all the notifications. I appreciate every like and every subscription. Subscription? Yeah, everybody that subscribes. I'm close to 2,000 subscribers. That's pretty bananas, so thank you to all of you. I'm probably gonna do a separate one where I ask for some feedback of what people wanna see in the future to celebrate the 2,000 subscriber milestone. And as always, if you watch the whole thing till the very end, I really, really appreciate it. Those are all very precious minutes in your life, so thank you, and I wanna see you next week. Bye.